Hey, hey developers, today we're going to talk about headless CMSs, when you should use them, and we're also going to go back through some of my previous videos and talk about some updates to them. So let's begin. Hey, and if you don't know, my name is Eric. I am a full stack software developer. I'm also the author of the Vue.js in action book. And if you guys are interested in Vue.js or interested in Ember.js or front end development, I created a link below. You can sign up for my mailing list. I'll get you a free chap a free copy of the first chapter of my book. And also you'll get some uh, cheat sheets. So make sure you click on that link below and you'll get it. All right, so there is something called a headless CMS. So basically it's a content management system for your website. And what that means is that you can create your front end website and react or really anything you want at all. And then you could have this headless CMS in the back end, which is perfect for your marketing people, for anybody else to get into and make changes. So let me give you an example of that. So I've been doing a, a series of videos on different, different CMS, headless CMSs that you can use with Vue.js and other front end frameworks. So if you guys are interested in that, um, I'll put some links here below in the description, but you'll also be able to click here in the thumbnails. So for example, sanity.io is pretty popular. Uh, so I, I did this video last and if I log into, you could see here that uh, I created a couple of projects and the last one I believe I created was this one, Eric YouTube. And if you click on here, this actually will bring me to the studio. And so what's cool about this is that somebody doesn't have to be a developer or programmer to be able to make changes and updates to your content. So for example, this is like a post that I created called Hello World. I created an author and a category and this whole system of sanity.io makes it pretty easy. So you can see here, this post has the title, the slug, the author. I can even drop images in here, categories. This has body text. And I can really simply plug this into my front end framework or to my website and then have any changes happen pretty easily and on the fly. There is also one I did called Data CMS. It has a similar concept. Uh, if you log in here, um, I just created a, a Nux demo before. And you could see here, it loads up for a second. I do also have a content. I also created a post here. Um, actually, it looks like this one. I don't think I have anything in this one. Maybe it's the other one. Let's try this one, Dato CMS. I think I created a couple of them just to play around with. So I guess I don't have much in either. Uh, this one actually does have posts in it though. So this has a similar interface. You have the slugs at the bottom. You can put a, a body and title. And you basically, you create these schemas for both of these. Um, it seems like Sanity.io was a little bit more complicated, but it's probably super powerful as well. And I haven't gone into super in depth on how to create these schemas, but it, it seems like once you do, you have the full power of connecting it up to your front end website and doing everything you want. And then I did a video on Gridsum and Gridsum's really cool is because it's, it's just like Gatsby and many others where you can just plug in all these different, uh, basically content management systems. So I can do contentful, I can do data CMS, I can even fake some data and put in WordPress and that. So this does everything for me, it's really simple. Um, so far between the two different content management systems, I think I like Sanity a little bit better, but I think but I think there's, there's definitely pluses and minuses. For example, if you look at Sanity and a lot of people pointed this out in the, I'll log out here, pointed this out in the comments. But if you look at the pricing right now, it's zero is no credit card required, but professional is $199. So that's a little pricey for a lot of people. Uh, on the other hand, if we look at data CMS, we'll log out here. We'll go back to it. I'll search for it. There we go. The pricing is uh, quite a bit more reasonable. It's $15 for the basic plan and 79 for the plus. So it seems like you, you can save a lot of money. I know that there is a deal through syntax.fm. They're a, they were doing advertising for Sanity and I think they had some deal with them. I'm not exactly sure. Let's see here. If we go to syntax.fm 
And yeah, so you can get you can get on their free developer plan. So this this kind of this is the deal for syntax members. It looks like um, we doubled the free included monthly usage to 200k, one meg API, 10 gig. So you can get a little bit better if you go through the syntax.fm link to have a deal, but it's still pretty expensive if you out if you end up grow, outgrowing the the developer plan. And so this is really only for personal projects getting started too. So if you're on a commercial plan, I don't think you may even want to start with this. But it, it I've noticed it is pretty powerful. Now Gridsum, it's not really a CMS. It's just a way you can connect to any data source. You know, I I did a when I did my demo on this, I actually connected it to my own Express server, and just showed how easy it was to grab data from anywhere. Actually, I connected it to a third-party API, just a random one. So you, I could easily see you could use Gridsum with your own Express server running your own GraphQL service. Uh, so I I could see the advantages of all these, and so far. I am, well, I'll get to that in a minute. So one other thing I want to mention too with Sanity is that they did leave a few messages in my last video. One thing they, they said was that um, I misspoke. I did I said that the Grok, I wasn't, they have this query language called Grok, but they are supporting both. They're actually supporting GraphQL. So they, it is in beta right now. They said it actually already works with Gatsby. There's already a plugin for it. So that is something that's really cool that they're supporting GraphQL and I misspoke about that. Uh, so that that's another plus for Sanity because they they are doing it. Here's the beta post they had on it. It looks like you can get it by doing a Sanity upgrade to the latest version, deploying, and then you can deploy it as GraphQL, which is really cool. So one thing also with Sanity is that you can... Uh, they actually mentioned it. I think they had a topic about this, but I think they maybe deleted their comment. Uh, they it's it's it has a lot of it has this rich text editor so you can kind of grab a bunch of information out of it it has a pretty powerful schema so it's it's really nice uh, what I want to do in the future and I love to hear your guys's opinions is what content management system I should do a demo on next and also I am definitely going to do a a sort of a I'm going to take all these content management systems I'm going to do a quick ranking on them I'm going to rank them on price on how easy they are to work with the APIs and just kind of give my overall opinion. That's going to be in a future video, but I'd love to try a few more. Somebody recommended to do Strappy, so I want to try that one next. And I've had a few comments of trying to set up WordPress as a headless CMS, so I want to try that too. There's uh, there's a lot of... of um, I've seen some boilerplate for like Nuxt and Vue.js to get it working with a headless CMS. There's a lot you have to do which is is not great, um, but there, there is some cool cool stuff out there. This has actually has RESTful or GraphQL, which is cool. Uh, so that's, that's all I have right now. Um, I just wanted to say too that as I'm going through these different content management systems and hooking them up to my front end frameworks, I noticed kind of, I, mean, I kind of have a, I'm kind of pausing for a second and thinking that wouldn't it be just be easier just to get like, create your app. Like, let's say you're gonna create a really cool app to, I don't know, talk to the stock market and, and do predictions or something. Wouldn't it make more sense to leave your app on like a separate subdomain from your main website and then have your main website just hosted on WordPress? Because first, I know a lot of people, what they're doing is they create a, basically they create a Jamstack website. If you don't know, there was a Jamstack conference, but here is what they're calling it about, where you have this modern web development architecture based on client-side JavaScript, reusable APIs, and pre-built markup. So you're using a lot of JavaScript and APIs. But the thing is, is that usually, what happened when um, when front-end frameworks started coming out, a lot of people worried about SEO, that, that search engines weren't able to crawl them correctly. And then we had this kind of rise in in server-side rendering, server-side rendered or static websites where you could take your React or Vue or, or Ember websites and you can create a static website with it and that would be able to be crawled more easily with uh, SEO from search engine crawlers. And then there's a whole idea of like server-side rendering where the first 
render of a website is actually sent to the browser first as just plain HTML for SEO purposes. So people have said, well, why do we even need WordPress? Let's create our full front end using just completely in React. Use something like Next or Gatsby or in Vue's case, Gridsum or Nuxt. And let's just create a website this way. We'll hook it into the CMS so that way our marketing people can make changes on the fly. But I'm thinking like why, it feels like you want a separation between the two, especially if you have like a mission critical app that's doing a lot of things. You don't want your marketing people to go in and make like little changes to your front end and you know possibly causing issues. I mean, it's probably, un high, it's probably light, unlikely, but it, I still see some issues. Why not just separate the front end marketing website away from the app just keep it on drew you know keep it on wordpress it's the easiest out there there's millions of developers out there for it you know, hundreds of thousands it's super easy to simple set up there's so many service providers that that can get your wordpress site up and running and and don't have to worry about maintenance and then have links in the front end website to your app and then not even worry about you know paying data cms or sanity or any of these other people you know hundreds of dollars a month it kind of makes me feel like there might be other use cases that I'm missing, um, but I don't know. I'd love to hear what you guys think. Is this the right trend? Is this what we should be doing? I'd love to hear what you guys think think about, and uh, I'd love to hear in the comments below. If you guys have any questions, uh, yeah, leave a comment below. Let me know what CMS you want me to do next and what, uh, what you think. Do you think this is the right trend? Do you think our, our front-end web apps should just all hook into these content management systems? Or do you think we just, just leave the content management systems by themselves and just link to wraps? Let me know. Thanks.